welcome to MJ Hobby Corner guys MJ here and today in this video I have two uh, short projects for you I um, am using a dollar store uh, skull necklace to make a uh, floating skull that to be used as a marker in spells uh, this is useful for example in Frostgrave a necromancer spell and uh, and a weapons rack completely from scratch so for the skull we're going to deal with that first here you see a picture of me drilling the base of the skull and this is a soft plastic skull and uh, i took the head apart of uh, and all the bones from the necklace apart and then drill a, a hole in the base and for the flight stand i want it low to the ground so i cut up a plastic fork and this is a very traditional way of making flight stands the base itself is from a bunch of dividers from uh, old storage boxes and I have a ton of these so I use them to make bases and so I forced the uh, bit of fork right through the plastic as you see here and uh, it's nice and tight and so it makes a good flight stand it's a very easy thing to do you know and it's very popular among gamers these kinds of flight stands so then I take green stuff and uh, shove it into the skull the skull is hollow it's a hollow plastic so I shove green stuff in it and this prepares the skull for uh, the flight stand that will uh, be connected to it and there it is there's the skull mounted on the flight stand but I wanted to make some flames something like ghostly flames or something and uh, you know so that is the next step so for the base of the flight stand uh, uh, you can see that the pictures are a bit inverted here in the video but uh, here I just texture it with a drill bit and it's a 1 16th drill bit and uh, this is what I mean that the videos are a little inverted this should have been earlier it's kind of repeated but that's okay it emphasizes the flight stand bit so I put my green stuff around the base of the flight stand and I just begin to texture it that's all and this will uh, strengthen the flight stand and it really makes a strong piece in the end all right, and that's all I'm doing here is preparing the, the green stuff for texturing. So once I'm done with that and the mounted spell skull is done, I get it ready for our painting. Uh, but first I want to add the flames. Now the way I do it, and there's many different ways to do this. This is not the, the way to make like flames or whatever. But I use my ball tool uh, on a bit of green stuff and I begin to like smush it and and give it some shape i take a forcep and i begin to pull on the green stuff at one end and this creates a ragged shape and i begin to like um add uh like little splits and and it goes off into other little tendrils and things like that so it's a, it's a slow process and all i'm doing here is attaching making sure the green stuff is attached to the forehead of the skull and I just pick at it with the tweezers, uh, make the ends ragged, and it kind of looks like a cabbage in the end. It's kind of funny, you know, when it's green like this. But I add more tendrils, more and more tendrils, and I begin to make a complicated pattern. Some of them will join together, and then I pull that, and it, and it creates a very sort of raggedy uh, texture with these uh, points coming out of it, and that's kind of my goal. And I'm not an expert at this. I mean, I just, you know, this is a technique that works for me. So I use ball tool, I use a sacto knife, and I use the tweezers, as you see in this kind of project. So we're going to move on a little bit after this uh, photo so that you can see the actual finished uh, green stuff work. All right, so this is the finished green stuff work after I use the X-Acto knife to kind of uh, make some grooves in there and, and, and uh, break up the green stuff a little bit, make it look like it's tendrils coming out of the forehead. And here it is base coated. So this project's pretty much finished. I just have to paint it. And not too bad on the flames. All right, for making the weapon rack, uh, this is a, a slightly different thing because everything's from scratch. And even the weapons because I don't have weapon bits and if you have weapon bits it's great just use your weapon bits and that's it so I decided to make my own weapons too for these racks and so what I do is I drill three little holes in about uh, 
like an inch, an inch and a half of craft stick. I cut the craft stick to inch and a half lengths. And my goal is to make an eye shaped rack. You'll see that in the videos. So I, I drill those holes with a very thin bit and I stick my uh, toothpicks into those holes. And, and this is the rack here. And as you notice, uh, the three toothpicks, one of them is actually the hole is a little bit uh, further away from the others and this is so that the weapons can fit so they're not in a straight line there's one that's a little bit off off to the front or off to the rear if you if, what you know what have you so that helps to when I stick the weapons in to hold them and glue them in place so here's a, a view I'm using wood glue by the way and I use another toothpick as an applicator and I just wait for that to dry. Here I am measuring a close a one of the woodcraft sticks uh, in order to cut it to make a base. And here I'm just filing it. That's what this picture is showing. I, I use my file. That is definitely one of the tools I use. And for this project, I use my uh, wire cutters, my pliers, and a file. You know, just to. Um, make sure everything is nice and filed so what this is pointing to is the base that I just cut and uh, previously you saw I was measuring it with a pencil and then the base that's where the weapons are gonna rest so it's a nice snug fit and here I'm using the wire cutters which is my primary cutter for this stuff to make the little bases that are gonna the little stands for the rack and there it is you see me gluing it to the sides of the rack and it forms an eye and that's the whole point and I don't add bases to these things because they're just better off the way they are because a lot of my tables are very textured so if you add a base it kind of looks funny so uh, so it is baseless so there it is it forms an eye that was my goal and that's the easiest way that I have to make a rack but I make them in different shapes too and there it is compared to the other rack that I finished. I made two racks on this day. And we're going to talk about the weapons right now. So for the sword, I am using tin cans. I love using tin cans. You have to be very, very careful cutting tin cans so you don't get cut. But there, I made a sword blade with a hilt. And I just uh, attached it to a little toothpick. And I begin to shape the sword. And you can see with my pliers give the sword a nice little groove that's why i love tin foil not tin foil tin cans <laughs> tin cans this is not tin foil this is a sprite can and then i add a little green stuff just to adorn the sword and there again there's many different ways of doing the swords but there's the sword resting with the green stuff and later i come back and i trim that green stuff to make it a little smaller so the sword you can see the alternating toothpicks in this picture what i meant so now for a crossbow. The crossbow is a little more complex. So it's done with a, about a toothpick that is an inch long. I cut a piece and then add some wire to it and then glued the wire so it would hold it a little bit. And it comes off sometimes because the next step involves some floral wire and it's 26 gauge so it's very thin. What I do is I wrap this wire around the front of the crossbow. I like the way that looks. So now these weapons are a little bit large in scale. I'm going to be making them smaller. There's another way to make them smaller. Uh, here I'm wrapping the wire uh, around the crossbow and this gives a lot of strength to the crossbow. But it also gives you that kind of illusion of rope that's holding things together. You know, like in a medieval crossbow, an early crossbow. And again, I can make these things smaller, but for purposes of this project, I, I wasn't too concerned uh, with the scale. But yeah, you can make these things smaller instead of toothpicks. You can use other things. So there I'm making the string of the crossbow using the same wire that I wrapped around the front. Okay, and uh, again, this is a tedious process. But it works. It works for me. So, still very rough. So now what I do is I cut a piece of tin, a tin, tin can. I gotta stop saying tin foil. Tin can. I cut the uh, tin, and it's very, very, very a uh, thin material. 
very thin metal so it's easily cut but you again you have to be very careful because these edges sometimes could be sharp and you don't want to cut yourself so you have to be very careful uh, you can use other materials you don't have to use this tin I'm just recycling materials you can use card uh, plastic card whatever you want but anyway I glue that over my uh, clothespin and then fold the front over and that is the benefit of this material it's very pliable very foldable and I fold it over to make the crossbow so there it is there's the little finished crossbow and it's a, a fun project I tell you and I use my pliers to kind of make sure everything is tight there is crazy glue under there that's what I used for these little weapons crazy glue I definitely don't use hot glue for this kind of stuff so crazy glue or contact cement either one works very well then to adorn the crossbow I uh, bend the wire in a U shape and then add it to the top of the crossbow right under the bow string and glue it with crazy glue and that's what you see here and so that makes the illusion of the groove that that where the bolt is gonna fit in the middle of that right and it's very rough you know it's an old crossbow it's been on that rack for a while now I'm going to show you how I make a, a battle axe with a toothpick and these are the thicker toothpicks they're more like cocktail sticks or something and then I, I, I cut up a piece of tin can and this is a sprite tin can all of these metal pieces are, are sprite tin can I draw my blade roughly okay and you can here you can do all kinds of designs and shapes or whatever you want as long as you can cut it efficiently and I make sure that when I do cut it I uh, those sharp edges I, I sh um, make sure they're not so sharp so I begin to cut first with a larger scissor but the, I, I switch to another scissor that's a lot thinner and it's bent so it's a lot better for cutting these kinds of small things and uh, I refine the shape until I'm happy with it I keep cutting and cutting until I'm happy with it until it's small enough and uh, you'll see that in a second now this is gonna be like a great axe it's gonna be a big axe maybe something that an ogre or a large orc would wield and again right now I'm not paying too much attention to scale but if you really want to make these smaller there is other ways to make them a lot smaller I can talk about that in another video for this project I'm satisfied with what I'm doing this is what I want so I attach the blade to my toothpick and here's the advantage of tin you can really shape it to have the groove this groove develop between the blades and then I use contact cement contact cement works really good for this project I use a toothpick applicator and then once the blade is stuck now I need to make that blade double-sided because you don't want that green showing and I don't want I want the toothpick to be covered in the middle of both blades so I take the whole assembled piece and I glue it to another base of tin another sheet of tin that I've cut and I'm gonna cut again you know once everything is glued I give it a chance to glue so that uh, everything is nice and, and tight and all right so uh, going back to the project so the tin is already glued to the uh, piece that I want to cut so this is going to be a double-sided uh, blade and again it looks a lot better like that so uh, here in this picture I'm going to be cutting and with the bent scissors these are these little cuticle trimmers that I got a long time ago and they're bent at an angle like a 45 degree angle the the little scissor blades are and so it's very useful for cutting into tight spaces like this and you can kind of see that in the video how the blades are bent it's not a straight scissor and this helps me greatly with these kinds of projects and it's very sharp so it's going to cut right through that tin so uh, there it is I'm just showing how I cut and I cut very slowly take my time just cut around it uh, you know make sure I don't uh, unglue the halves 
So once I have my axe, and there it is, I then go back and start trimming again. And there is the rack with the weapons that I've added so far. And you see the sword right there and a shield that I'm working on. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this has been a very fun project. And these are very useful pieces of scatter terrain. Uh, we're going to be using them in our next game. So our next game is going to be Rangers of Shadow Deep. Don't miss it. That's where we're going to be using all of this scatter terrain. Thank you, guys, and we'll talk very soon. I hope you enjoyed this video.